Um, I want to thank Sages for, and the panelists for the privilege of, the, of presenting our, our video. Um, my name is Dan Garron. I'm one of the bariatric surgeons at the Duke University Health System. We are presenting ruin wild gastric bypass conversion to SIPs due to weight recurrence. These are our disclosures, none of which are relevant to the stock. Approximately 10 to 20% of the patients regain weight or fail to achieve significant weight loss after uh, ruin Y gastric bypass. It all depends on the initial BMI. There are several options for, revi for revising weight uh, regain after ruin Y gastric bypass. We believe that one of the options is a conversion of ruin Y to SADI or SIPS, and this is feasible and highly effective. Sadie was described for the first time in 2007 by Sanchez Pernaute. It was brought to the United States um, years later and was called SIPS. Essentially what a SIPS and a Sadie is, is a loop duodenal switch. Compared to the original duodenal switch, there are similar outcomes in terms of uh, weight loss, comorbidity resolution, and malnutrition. To go over the technique, the SIPs or SADI include a sleeve gastrectomy that is performed over a 40 to a 50% um, 50 French bougie. It includes a duodeno ileostole that is performed at about 300 centimeters from the ileocecal uh, junction. We're presenting a case of a 54 year old female with past medical history significant of hypertension, diabetes, depression, and sleep apnea. She underwent a ruin wild gastric bypass three years ago with an initial BMI of around 67. She dropped uh, initially um, down to 49, kept that for a year, and then unfortunately, she gained back to a BMI of 52. We, she underwent our post-operative uh, evaluation that include an upper GI and EGD, looking for complications of the gastric bypass. Then she met with our nutritionist and psychology team to have um, behavioral modification intervention. Mm -hmm. After all was this accomplished, we planned for a revisional surgery, a conversion from ruin Y gastric bypass to a SIPS. The, place, the ports are placed as depicted in the slide. We start by delineating the anatomy and counting the limbs from the ileocecal valve in a, in a, uh, and proximally. We count 300 centimeters and mark the uh, proximal limb for orientation. We turn our attention to the gastric bypass and the delineation of the anatomy and start doing uh, lysis of adhesions, both sharp and using energy device in order to identify the, the pouch and the ruling. Once this was accomplished, we introduce the, uh, the endoscope to confirm and, and, and know where is the gastrojejunal anastomosis. Once this was uh, done, we proceeded to transect the, uh, the rulin in order to uh, dissect this free to identify the pouch and do our proximal transection. So using a black load of the endoscopic stapler, we transected proximal to the, uh, to the anastomosis, creating a, a, a new pouch. And then we turn our attention to the greater curvature of the remnant in preparation for a gastrogastrostomy. Gastrotomies were created at the pouch and at the um, lesser curve of the remnant. And using a linear stapler technique, we created a gastrogastric fistula. The common enterotomy was closed with rated absorbable suture. It is notable to say that the vascular supply of the greater curve was preserved in order to support this anastomosis. As you can see here, it's not a true complete sleeve, it's more like a fundectomy, but certainly is an excision of the, the stomach. We we'll turn our attention to the duodenal dissection and following the, 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 the greater curve, we create a window in the retro duodenal space, having the gastroduodenal artery as our uh, landmark. We transect three centimeters from the pylorus, and then we uh, bring the loop of uh, distal intestine and create a posterior wall, uh, outer posterior wall using barbed um, suture. We proceed to do our 
dual denotomy using electrocautery and matching enterotomy uh, in the intestine. We complete our anastomosis in two um, layers. First, an inner, uh, an outer inner layer using absorbable uh, suture, and and then we proceed to do a, <clears throat> a anterior um, layer, uh, completing our hands-on anastomosis. Once this is completed, we occlude both the efferent and the afferent limbs, and we proceed to do a leak test. First, verifying patency um, and, and a leak test of the gastrogastrostomy, and finally doing a leak test of the duodenal ileostomy. Once this was verified, we proceed to excise the, the sleeve uh, specimen and the roof. And to summarize, the first step of this procedure is to uh, delineate the anatomy of the gastric bypass. It's important to localize the gastric pouch and the, rem and the, the remnant and the rulim. Next, the first step is to count the limbs of the, of the loop uh, uh, and of the loop to adenal switch and mark the, the, the limbs for orientation at the appropriate length. Next, we transect the roux and the pouch are just proximal to the anastomosis. We create a gastrogastrostomy by, um, by putting together the pouch and the remnant and then creating the sleeve. And finally, performing the duodenal ileostomy. The operation took about 168 minutes. The estimated blood loss was minimal and the patient was discharged home on post of day two with good tolerance, uh, PO tolerance, and good pain control. Revisional surgery is technically challenging, is associated with increased complications, and it's recommended to do it at, um, at uh, tertiary care referral centers. It is essential to preserve as much blood supply, particularly in the gastrogastrostomy and the construction of, during the construction of the sleeve. Care must be taken when transected the duodenum. It's a difficult dissection, but uh, as long as you um, follow the landmarks such as the GDA, the, the, all the biliary structures and the pancreas should be safe. Revision of a ruined white to a sip is a feasible procedure when expected weight loss has not been achieved. With that, I want to thank again Sages and the panelists for the privilege of the podium, and I am happy to take any questions. Thank you.